Listen, you're not the only one that thought there had to be a better way. How can I moisturize my hair at 6 p.m. and come 9 p.m. and Trinus is already waiting on me at the door like... <laughs> I mean, wow, I have high frosty hair, but you would think that after all of the elling and the owing and the seeing that I would be able to retain moisture for more than just a few hours. But no. So that's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I consider to be the secret source to long lasting moisture, regardless of your hair type. It literally took me years to discover this. And honestly, I don't even know how I stumbled across this. But since I have, this has literally changed my approach to moisturizing hair. And I guarantee you that it will change your approach too. Now I'll also be sharing with you guys how I personally use these ingredients for maximum moisture retention. So make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video so that you don't miss out on any of that because literally your hair depends on it. Now before you guys go off on me in the comments, let me just make this quick disclaimer. I am not knocking the LOC method. If anything, I'm just making the best of it, enhancing it if you like. Now for any of you that aren't familiar with the LOC method, the L stands for liquid or leave-in, the O stands for oil or butters, and C stands for for cream. But here's the issue with the LOC method. You can essentially just pick any leave-ins, any liquids, any oils, any butters, and or any creams. And that should automatically do the job for moisturizing your hair, right? Wrong. Because if you could use any combination of leave-ins, creams, oils or butters and it would give you long lasting moisture, then I wouldn't be making this video. And quite frankly, you wouldn't be watching this video either. So this is where film forming humectants come in. Now, if you've been watching my channel for more than a minute now, you will know how much I rave about film forming humectants. And if you're new here, then you came at a really good time because I'm about to dive into what these film forming humectants are and how you can use them to get really, really juicy curls that retain moisture for literal days. All right, guys, now let's get into this video. Now I'm sure the majority of you guys will already know what normal humectants are. So humectants like glycerin and honey, that when you apply them to your hair, attract water from the atmosphere when it's already abundant in the atmosphere. Now film forming humectants behave similarly in that they will also attract moisture from the surrounding atmosphere to your hair. But because they are more chemically complex and just larger than glycerin or honey, they will be able to store more of that moisture within themselves than glycerin or sorbitol might have been able to do. Film forming humectants will then go go on to create a film around your hair that will then significantly slow the rate of moisture loss from within your hair because that moisture or that water is going to have to pass through that film to leave your hair. But here's something else that's really impressive about film forming humectants that you can't get with normal humectants. Remember all that water that I was saying that film forming humectants are able to store within themselves? When your hair is in a dry or an arid climate, it then releases that moisture that it has kept into your hair to make sure that your hair is staying moisturized even if it's not being introduced Reduced to new sources of moisture. Now there are two main groups of film forming humectants that I'm currently aware of and those are plant gels and hydrolyzed proteins. Now I don't want to complicate things by going into proteins in this video but I have done a number of videos on proteins so if you are interested in learning a bit more about proteins then you can go ahead and watch those after this video. But plant gels are the more tangible as well as the more palatable to all hair types out of the two groups of film forming humectants so I'm going to stick to those strictly in this video. Okay so here are 12 common plant gels that you will typically be able to find either on their own or in a product formulation somewhere. So you've got aloe vera, flaxseed gel, also known as linseed. We've got hydroxyethyl cellulose, hydroxypropyl trimonium honey, which is an unnecessarily long word for honey quad. We've got Irish moss, aka seaweed extract, aka sea algae, aka carrageenan. Goodness, this thing has more names than Joe Exotic. We've got marshmallow root, just in case anyone was wondering, no, this does not taste like marshmallows. We've got nettle leaf, we've got oak. I was about to say okra gel, <laughs> okra gel. Shout out to all my West Africans, if you know, you know. We've got pectin. Have you guys ever wondered why you've never seen jam get dry before? No? Well, probably not, but now you are. And the answer is pectin. We've got slippery elm, and we've also got the go-to ingredient for people on the keto diet trying to make fake bread, and that is xanthan gum. Yes, that one was personal because that thing is not bread, okay? Someone used to tell you people it's not real bread and you know it. So why are you kidding yourself? Anyway. 
So all my DIYs, you're probably going to recognize a number of ingredients on this list and you're also going to be able to see that the common thread between all of these ingredients is the fact that they all create some sort of mucus or gel-like substance. Let's take aloe vera for example. Aloe vera is literally the poster child for plant gels and how they have superior moisture retention properties. Have you guys ever thought about how aloe vera, a plant that grows in the desert, can still thrive in a high heat and no rainfall climate? Well if you've ever cut open an aloe vera, which I'm sure 99 9.9% of you have or you've seen someone do it then you will see the amount of mucilage that is inside the aloe vera plant and it is this mucilage that allows the aloe vera plant to store whatever little moisture that it might be getting and cause it to last for an extended period of time so that it can preserve the plant. Now of course I was curious to find out if this also applied to other desert plants so what did I do? I picked up my laptop and I literally typed in what does a cactus look like inside? Yeah. My internet providers are somewhere right now thinking, wow, this girl is literally losing her natural black mind. Anyway, here's what I found. Oh my gosh, feel it's like jelly. It's like aloe. Here, whoa, it's, it's so aloe. good. Oh my God, feel it's like jelly. It's like aloe. Coincidence? I don't think so. In fact, the plant gels in these desert plants are so good at retaining moisture that their botanical group name is literally succulent. I kid you not, these plants are literally called succulent plants just because of this. I refer to the all-knowing Wikipedia. Right, in botany, succulent plants, also known as succulents, are plants with parts that are thickened, fleshy, and engorged. Yikes, I did not expect to see that word. Usually to retain water in arid climates or soil conditions. The word succulent comes from the Latin word succus, meaning juice or sap. I mean, I don't really know what you guys want me to tell you. It's right there in Latin. Even the Latin is telling you that this is the secret for juicy hair. Let's keep reading. Succulents are often grown as ornamental plants because of their striking and unusual appearance, as well as their ability to thrive with relatively minimal care. Now, I'm not telling you to give your hair minimal care, but if you needed any evidence that you would be able to keep your hair moisturized with minimal effort, then there it is. The habitats of these water-preserving plants are often in areas with high temperatures and low rainfall, such as deserts. Succulents have the ability to thrive on limited water sources, such as mist and dew, which makes them equipped to survive in an ecosystem which contains scarce water resources. I mean, Wow. If plant gels are keeping plants hydrated in the literal desert, the desert, you guys, then I don't think it's a big leap of faith to say that I can trust them with the moisture retention of my hair. Now, before any of you go off dissecting cacti to moisturize your hair with, uh, don't. You will hurt yourself and I will not be liable. In any event, I've actually put this list of film forming humectants in the description box below. I've also gone ahead to do some research to find some moisturizers that have film forming humectants in them already. So if at any point you are looking to replace your existing moisturizers then you can go ahead and check in the description box for those and yeah you're welcome. Okay, you guys know that I love me a good research experiment, but I'm gonna need your help on this one. I'm going to need you to think of your favorite moisturizers, i.e. the ones that keep your hair feeling moisturized. And I'd like you to go through the ingredients list and scan it to see if you can find any film forming humectants in there. If you do find any, then I'm going to need you to please go ahead and pop them in the comments below because I'm really curious to find out if it's just me or if there is actually some sort of correlation here. Also, really quickly before I get into how I personally like to use these film forming humectants, if you're still watching this video, then please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, then you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my juicy future content. Okay guys, let's get back into it. So after last week's video where I took you guys through my entire wash day, a number of you asked me if I could show you how I re-moisturize my hair throughout the entire week. So here are five quick fire tips to show you how I moisturize my high porosity hair using film forming humectants for juicy moisturized hair all throughout the week. So the first thing that I want to share with you guys that I personally do is to make sure that there are film forming humectants in as many of the products that I use to moisturize my hair. The second thing that I look out for when I'm moisturizing my hair is to have at least two of these film forming humectants in the ingredients list. The more film forming humectants in the ingredients list, the better and the higher up they are, the better. This is why if you have a look at the ingredients that I like to use to moisturize my hair, one of which is the Curl Love by Camille Rose, then you'll be able to see that it does have film forming humectants in here. We've got 
aloe vera and we've also got slippery elm as well i personally like to seal with the kinky curly curling custard we've got nettle in here we've got marshmallow we've also got aloe vera and we also have pectin and three out of those four are the first few ingredients i actually went through the trouble of digging out another favorite leave-in conditioner of mine or cream of mine that i haven't used for ages and that's not because i don't like it anymore just because it's not that easy to come by and that is the Sultanix Not Source Coil Detangler. I'm sure if any of you have heard of this, you will know how crazy everyone went over this because I feel like part of what makes this such a good leave-in is the fact that it contains so many good film-forming humectants. In the first few ingredients, we've got nettle, we've got horsetail, we've got slippery elm, we've also got marshmallow root in here, we also have aloe vera, flaxseed gel, guar gum, algae. Guys, there are literally eight plant gels in this one leave-in conditioner literally no wonder why this sold so well if you own or know the person that owns sultanicals then really you need to have chats with them because we need to have this back in the uk the third tip that i have for how i personally like to use film forming humectants is that for somebody like myself who has high porosity hair when you're looking for a good moisturizer you want to look for moisturizers that have a good mix of film forming humectants conditioning ingredients as well as oils and butters now we already know that oils and butters are really good at waterproofing and slowing the rate of moisture loss so when you combine these with film forming humectants then you are just further slowing down the rate of moisture loss so you can use these two in conjunction on the other hand if you are somebody that has low porosity hair especially if that hair is coarse and you have products that tend to sit on top of your hair then maybe you want to find products that have a lower amount of oils and butters in them but still have a good amount of film forming humectants in them this is because the film that plant gels create over your hair is still very light and flexible so it will help your hair to retain moisture without weighing it down too much or just sitting on top of your hair and feeling more like product buildup now, whereas these two are really good examples for high porosity hair of how you can find a product that has good conditioning agents as well as film forming humectants, as well as a good amount of oils and butters, a good alternative for people who have coarse low porosity hair would be the Kinky Curly Not Today. Now, having a look at the ingredients list on this, you can see that it does have some film forming humectants in them, but it doesn't have any oils and any butters. So if you are worried about that buildup sitting on your head, then maybe use a product that is similar to this and then add the oils and butters in yourself as necessary. The fourth tip that I have for you guys on how I manage to keep moisture in my hair for longer throughout the entire week is that for the most part, I wear my hair in twists or knots for the majority of the week. And obviously you know that your hair will lose moisture a lot slower if it's in braids or twists or knots than if it's just kind of out here wilding out. Yeah. Now this fifth tip is going to be such a winner amongst all of you naturals who really don't have the time or just would prefer to not have to spend hours and hours on your hair and that is how I re-moisturize my hair during the week. So believe it or not it's actually very rare that I will reapply product to my hair during the week. I know it's crazy right I have high porosity hair how did I go from not being able to retain moisture for more than a few hours to being able to retain moisture for a full week. Here's exactly how. When I go to the shower I don't wear a shower cap. So remember how we were looking at the Wikipedia page for succulents and it was saying how succulents have the ability to thrive with limited water sources such as mist and dew. Guys, it's literally as simple as this. All that is needed to reactivate these film forming humectants in your hair is to allow the steam from the bathroom whilst you're taking a shower to reactivate those film forming humectants. So typically the moisturizing that I do on my wash day will carry me on till about day four or day five, after which I'll likely just spritz my hair with a bit more water. If the steam is not enough but it literally still does a good job and even at this point I might maybe just apply a tiny little bit more of my leave-in or of the kinky curly curling custard and then once I can feel the film forming humectants beginning to reactivate I'll typically run my hands through my hair just to distribute the product that has been reactivated or I'll just go in with my easy detangler brush just to make sure that the product is evenly distributed so once I'm satisfied with how much moisture I've been able to reactivate in my hair then I will just go ahead and reach twist that back up and pin it back up and I'm good to go. Look, all of this is not to say that your hair will not dry. Just because you're using film forming humectants does not mean that you are going to be walking around with damp hair for a whole week. But the thing is, when your hair does dry, it's not parched. And even when your hair stops feeling wet, it's not crunchy. 
And the great thing is that even if you want to take it one step further and you want to reactivate the juicy look of your hair, all you have to do is spritz it with a bit of mist or go into the shower and let the steam do all of that for you and you're good to go. Well, that's everything for this video, guys. I literally cannot wait to hear how this moisture hack has helped you guys to improve your moisture retention, just as it did mine. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that you guys continue to support me and I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.